so many times against my explosive mines. He knows. I want to try to steal his horses if I can. What are you? What are you doing? Isengard Rohan combination. Not bad. Not bad at all. We have never seen this combination in the films, but luckily, we will get the chance to see that in the game. In Battle for Middle of One on the patch 2.22, in which your dreams come true. And do you guys remember the scene in the extended edition when Saruman was asking Theodin, hey Theodin, you know, we shall make peace. And imagine if Theodin would respond like, I thought you would never ask. And all of a sudden they become the best friends and conquer the Middle Earth and capture the One Ring, you know, <laughs> would be kind of crazy. My ally want to give me his settlement, that's good. I would gladly take it because I'm a greedy person. The more the better, you know, the more the better. Give me more, give me more. My Uruks are hungry. It's a good, good faction at the bottom side. And I don't know, maybe evil faction. Um, I couldn't wall check properly. But I like the surprise effect, you know what I mean? Okay, so Rohan, Isengard combination. Pretty solid combination in the game. A very strong early game with the Warchant. And I will also Warchant my allies' peasants. And this way we can deal a lot of damage. I also like the move from my ally that he doesn't stop in trying to fight against the soldiers. Just keep moving on, deal economical damage, because Rohan has the chance to recruit additional swordmen and Gondor can't from the farms, you know? Okay, we cannot capture this, but I will try to deny him from capturing this, so we can keep, att keep paying attention and try to snipe the building from the opponent player when it's 0%, okay? Hold on. He's thinking about it. Yeah! <laughs> Yeah, boy, you don't take my settlements like that. Who you think you're playing against, boy? Okay, guys, I'm, I'm okay. I didn't do anything game-changing, but that's minus 200. That's actually a lot of money at the beginning of the game. He's just losing because he was greedy, just like me. And we don't need to rush Lourdes in this matchup against double Gondor. Because there's a chance they might go for double stable and spam Gondor Knights. And that's going to be kind of painful to deal with. And for that reason, I want to get Pikeman early on the field. And if you recruit crossbowmen instead of the Uruks, your Uruk pit will be able to level up twice as fast. And also, in this situation, crossbowmen are going to be much better for the defensive part against the soldiers, you know? Okay, beautiful. So we are in, in a very good situation. Uh, we were also able to deal a lot of economical damage to the player at the bottom right side. It's kind of out of the game. We just need to make sure to, you know, to not lose too much in exchange. you see the importance of the crossbowman because even if he uses land there is no fight i have to take in a melee fight i can always kite and remember the uruks they are the fastest units in the game infantry units and you cannot catch them you can also not get away from them so we can kite them all the time as he's trying to get to us we need to wait for the towers to come up and we have now the second and the beautiful part is after two crossbowmen and one urukai our uruk pit is going to be level two which will give us the chance to recruit the uruk pikemen Okay, beautiful. Our eco is looking phenomenal. It could be looking better, but the enemy is putting great amount of pressure on us. It's fine though. I like challenges, you know me. But, you know, uh, this day was actually quite rough for me, boys. I've been playing a lot of games, and uh, I was playing with a dude. <laughs> no, normally, I'm not tilted. And I like when there are new players joining, you know, the game, and I can eventually teach them a thing or two. Um, but it's hard when they are not open for communication and one game was quite funny I wish I could be uploading this video but it's gonna be like two minutes video uh, at the beginning of the game I was trying to give him tips and tricks you know what I mean I was like hey let's do this let's do that and he responded like I watch all your videos I know what to do and then the second he says that he's running into the troll layer <laughs> I said I'm worried dude I'm worried you know and then there is a mistake and also, guys, please don't do that. When you play a 2v2 matchup, don't use your Elvin Wood or Tainted Land first, because there is a chance your opponent has the chance to counter that. So when you use it first, one of your opponents covers that, and even if I cover after that, the second opponent will get the chance to cover. They will have the land advantage if you use it first, unless you have to. But there is no reason to open the fight or engage a fight with your Elvin Wood, because that will turn into a quick disadvantage and might you actually lose the fight. But it was, you know, kind of funny and said at the same time, you know, he's like, don't worry, Shanks, I watch all your videos, <laughs> I got this. And then I see him running into the trolley, I was like, I, I worry, dude, I worry, I'm worrying. But it was funny, you know. But again, I'm always 
grateful for everyone who's you know trying to go, go, uh, get some multiplayer games done um, as long as they are kind of trying to listen a little bit you know what i mean it's all about uh, strategy development okay he's trying to creep this with boromir need lords though to counter that the fighting urukai however lords can actually not match against boromir you know, in a one-on-one situation as long as boromir is level um i mean as long as lords is not level three we need carnage i cannot engage this i need pikeman and i will try to cripple him okay oh look at him he was trampling my uruks urukai looks like meat's back on the menu boys no 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 sir there are my pikemen nice micro by him nice micro okay so basically when you play against isengard you can still have fun with your gondor knights and rohirrim you can micro around the pikemen they can never catch up to you it harder it is against mordor because trolls are slapping they knock you down on the ground you can't they disable you pretty much you cannot move for a certain amount of time and then later on mordor has the chance to go for a nazgul in witch king and then your Gondor Knights or Rohirrim, normal Rohirrim are going to be quite completely useless. He's going to heal eventually, I believe. Yeah, he's healing, but I don't think it's going to be changing too much about the situation. The cripple too long, you know? We might actually nerf the duration of the cripple soonish, but I don't want to make it too weak also. Maybe what they can do is keep the duration of cripple, but make it a level 2 ability or something. Level 1 is kind of ridiculous in my opinion, you know what I mean? Like you invest... A 1400 into a hero in the second he joins the battlefield he has the chance to shut down any other enemy hero in the game and maybe it's a little bit too much you know maybe he should be getting that with level 2 or something so you need to you know invest the money early into him and then try to level him up to level 2 or something then i can understand but level 1 uh, same also goes to the eobin spear and it chunks the nazgul and the witch king quite a lot and then she can do that with level 1 you know or farami warning arrow too right basically Heroes that get certain abilities, they should be kind of trying to fight for that. And what do you guys think about this? Let me know in the comment section down below, you know? I don't I don't want them to get gifted anything. Exceptions are, of course, those very expensive heroes like Gandalf. And he needs to be, you know, you need to invest 6,000 into him. And also two power points to make him kind of useful. But all the other heroes uh, should be, or Saruman, um, all the other heroes, they should be able to fight a little bit in order to get those important and game-changing abilities unlocked, you know? Okay, we're in a good spot. I mean, as long as we can keep the fight in the middle, in the center of the map Anorian, we should be in a good spot. We can fight this. I'm gonna give them also bleeds. My Vorchan is on cooldown though. Um, Boromir is equally fast as Lourdes. Lourdes is actually slightly faster in compared to Boromir, but the difference in movement speed between Lourdes and Parami is, you know, kind of great. In favor of Isengard, of course. I mean, there is no hero on food that is faster than Lourdes. But there are heroes they are equally fast and that's one of one of them is for example legolas you know and i really want to add sharku in the near future to the patch 2.22 and um, you know i know some of you guys i was reading your comments some of you guys would be like oh but that would turn the patch into a mod hey guys come on now now um how many um, did you ever play league of legends it's they're bringing new champions every two weeks you know what i mean it's a part of the game development in order to get more strategies unlocked and to make the game more versatile you need to add some new units and heroes to the game as long as they are balanced around the game around the faction and they are not op or broken um, they can just improve the gameplay and make it make it more inter uh, entertaining and also interesting at the same time you know again a lot of balance testing has to be done before the release but i think if you can implement a hero like sharku who was seen in the films he's not like a you know like a made up hero like a custom hero um and then it would open like a brand new strategy for the isengard faction like a cavalry strategy in which you can eventually make more war riders instead of the combos pikeman exclusively it could be fun you know because isengard is one of those factions with like quite a lot of limitations like war riders are only kind of good in the beginning of the game they kind of fall off they have no shields and or knight shields or horseman shields so they can even not really fight really greatly against combos in the mid to lead game and lead game they are really really weak in my opinion you know and because they have no sport hero yes they have warchant from the spellbook but you know warchant is good 
uh, only for a short duration. It's not gonna last forever. Also, the same situation for Mordor. Imagine a Mordor going for the infantry, recruiting Gothmog, you know, as the leader of the orcs, and, you know, eventually recruiting a Nazgul um, on, on a horse. Instead of having two Nazguls on the Fair Beast, we have one Nazgul on the Fair Beast and one Nazgul on the, on the horse. With a cheaper hero, because think, think about that. Mordor has a cheap hero for 150, that is Gollum, and the next hero, you know, the next expensive hero costs you 5,000. 5,000. And you have two of them. So you have like duplicate hero, the two Nazgûls, and then the Witch King for 8,000. You have no hero in between. Like either you have 150 or 5,000 or 8,000, you know? The jump from 150 to 5,000 or 8,000 is kind of crazy, crazy. And two Felbys are also kind of busted in my opinion. Like the thing, guys, I don't know if you guys understand. Um, hold on. But having two and with the Witch King three flying heroes on the map is kind of busted. Trust me. Cripple level 5. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, but I just wasted my cripple. Um, I want to actually siege him very soon, you know? I don't want to give him too much time. You know what we are planning to do in this game, right? We want to play around with the explosive minds a little bit uh, to have some fun. And also bring those combos. Our eco is looking good, and that's one of the mistakes people are doing, for example. Um, also happened to me multiple times. Like, when you find yourself in a mid to late game situation, you don't want Isengard to do whatever he wants to do. You know, when, I, when we are sitting in that situation, I will have more money than anybody else. With three mills in the middle camp under my control, I can do whatever I want. I can recruit, uh, you know, more combos. I can save up for Saruman. I can make siege weapons. And all of that simultaneously. And this Gondor who is going for the horses should be trying to put some pressure on my, on my bees just to draw attention. So I need to absorb pressure and recruit eventually more pikemen and waste my command points for that, you know? But look at this, it's like a Sunday evening situation. I have the time of my life, I can build the army warfare of Mordor and just be ready when I, whenever I want to be ready, you know what I mean? I lost so many games today. Um, I was playing with another person. I, I don't know if maybe he was not able to speak English. <laughs> it was so funny and also said at the same time, you know, I'm, I'm again. They told me that it's a new player, and I'm I'm really really happy when we get new players to the game. And then I was trying to, <laughs> guys, I was trying with my Golden Knights. I was trying to creep the war clear, you know. I'm all, all, you know, I'm almost done with the war creep. I'm like my Golden Knights are healthy. My ally was Isengard. Right before I creep the layer fully, he comes with the Uruk. War chance only his own Urukai steals the creep away from me, including the money. You know, I was investing like 30 seconds of my lifetime to creep this, so just my ally could come, watch on his own units, and steal my treasure, you know? It kind of makes you think, am I in a 1v2v2 uh, situation or in a 1v3 situation? But this game is looking good, you know, my ally is actually putting some pressure, you see, all about is about time efficient. A time investment so um, basically in this game there is there shouldn't be a minute time in which you don't do anything you always want to keep moving around even if you cannot destroy things but it, you know kind of makes your opponent forces your opponent to look to this area you know makes him forces him to react to that play which gives your ally more time it's all about being macro like you know epm action per minute what are you doing are you sitting in the base with all your units or are you just sending the units back which are damaged and keep fighting and putting pressure with the other units? Okay, thank you, man. I don't need healing any, anytime soon. Just, I'm gonna bump him. I wanna go to this piece after I bump it, okay? Because the, the one thing is, like, again, it's about <laughs> pressure. Because we are pressuring the bottom right castle. And all of the units from both the players are actually inside this castle. So they need to now make a choice. They are trying to prepare for the defense, but what we can do now, and that's, to, you know, the Isengard faction is the best faction for that because you have the chance to one-shot the walls with the explosive mine. Oh, you wanna bully me with double warning arrow. Double Faramir, double showing your quality. I, I don't know if I can fight this, but I will try to fight this. My warchant is still on cooldown. Uh-oh. 
Right? But again, that's a mistake from my opening, from my ally, for example. Again, you don't want to use the land for uh, as far as, you know, that's, that is a Gandalf run. I have no cripple anymore. I was using, wasting it for, for Faramir. Gonna have to grade on. Keep running, keep running, keep splitting up. Oh, my combos are too slow. They don't want to react. I give him too much experience now. Oh my goodness, we are getting kind of crashed. My ally shouldn't be trying to fight this. I just opened him like a full opportunity. Like he has a full empty base with all his units being around this side. So my ally with the Rohirrim and Glorious Charge should be able to fully de defeat him. But it's okay. Nice. Glorious Charge actually cleaned up everything. That's good. Um, I can also go for Saruman. The problem is I was not paying attention. I was kind of cash looting. So I'm going to get... I want to blow up everybody, guys, by the way. I want to blow up everybody. I will sp I will keep spamming explosive mines in this game. We need to kill this power guard, which is quite tanky. Let's go for Saruman. The white wizard. Oh, Lord, don't die, please. Lord. He's fast, though. Uh-oh. Keep running, Lord. Keep running, my friends. Look, this Faramir is trying to show his quality. Faramir, what are you doing? He's inting. Um, nice. Lightning sword from Ganda from downtown. I am trying to implement more <laughs> explosive mines to this castle. I, I'm pretty certain we should be in a good spot. Like, my Saruman is going to be there very soon, and then I can use Fireball and kill a lot of them. In the meantime, keep pressuring with the explosive mines. Level 3 Siege Warrior. You love to see it. Saruman is almost on the field. My cripple is available, and I'm going for it. Fireball, the tower guards. Oh, he knocks me down on the ground. Uh, Boromir. Man. I want to cripple him so bad, but I don't know if I can. Because I'm so low that I believe one warning arrow would almost be enough to one-shot me. But I will try to bump his castle. We can revive Saruman. I mean, again, we have a lot of money. But unfortunately, besides investing money into the reviving of your heroes... You also need to wait a couple of minutes. Depends on the hero level. So the punishment for losing heroes actually is great in this game. I want to hide our explosive mine and eventually make a play later on. But these players, they actually played, I mean, especially Matthias, played so many times against my explosive mines. He knows. He knows and he might pay attention to every single one of them. We are blowing up his wall all the time. Explosive mine. What kind of sorcery is that? The wall is so strong. Dude, it's kind of crazy. The evil factions got like crazy stuff. Like in Helm's Deep, they got the explosive mine. In Minas Tirith, they got the Grant. 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 I believe Grant would be also able to break the gate easily. And I believe Isengard was even able to break the gate without the explosive mine. The explosive mine is kind of nutty though. Like imagine you have the like, explosive mine in Minas Tirith. There is no chance the gate could have survived that. The explosion was kind of sh shattering. Literally almost all pieces of the entire helm's deep deeping wall into pieces like the the raw damage and strength of this explosive mine was something else and quick question to you guys would you prefer explosive mine or grunt i mean just from the damage perspective i would prefer explosive mine but if i have to make a choice i would of course choose grunt you know it's so much such a cool unit such a cool thing. And the hype around it when they are like, ground, 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 ground. It was so phenomenal. This Gondor army is actually looking pretty strong. Um, whose land is that? I'm not sure. And again, it's a mistake from him. You know, when you use land now, you give the opponent the chance to use it, to use their, you know, if one of them is going to use their land, then I need to cover, and then the second one is going to cover, so they have the land advantage. We don't want to do that. I think they covered the land. You can see the glow. It's not blue anymore, so it's not from us. It's uh, greenish. Okay, we should not be fighting on their land. You see they are trying to snipe my heroes exclusively. I want to cripple this... Look, they are chunking now my, my, my lords. I want to try to steal his horses if I can. Got a cripple. Got a cripple, this dude. I mean, my lords is going to die anyway, but maybe I can cripple. I'm going to go for the freezing rain now. Let's use it. Oh, okay. I can cover this. I believe 
they have no more land, right? They caught the first one, if I'm not mistaken. My loot got killed. I mean, I'm not on the land, so I should be in a good spot. We need to insta-revive loot. It's kind of fiesta. I'm going to cover this, risk, take a risk. I believe they have no more land. I believe they covered the first one from my ally, then they just, you know, used an, a second one for the visa blast. Oh my goodness, man. I mean, we are winning this fight, but Faramir has finally shown his quality in sniping my Saruman. Okay, we were able to dominate this fight, though, because they were trying so hard to get to my heroes. I mean, again, very smart move. It's very important and actually essential to kill the heroes first, especially those game making heroes like Gandalf, even Borom here. Because even if, if a hero doesn't have like a crazy ability like a Visa Plus from Gandalf, for example, or the Warm Tongue from, Lur uh, from Saruman, it is still very important to kill the heroes first. Because what they are doing most of the time is to give leadership, to make the units deal either more damage or be more tanky. And when you kill them, it will be just much easier to deal with the current situation. I mean, there are exceptions to the rule, and one of the heroes you don't want to be focusing hard is Aragorn when he is using Anduril and also Blade Master. That's gonna just take you too much time unless you have like level 10 combos or Gimli. These heroes you don't want to try to kill first because it will be just taking you too much time, you know? Gimli with Slayer, good luck killing him with combos. It will take you legit a minute, and because he's so tanky, his army will keep dealing damage to your army while you are trying to kill Gimli. So it's a win-win situation, and then you can heal him and make him pretty much unkillable. Okay, so my ally is moving. Our army is looking pretty strong, but I have no pikemen, so I, I... I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't be not doing this, but I'm gonna do it anyway, you know? I think we are in a very strong position that we can take risk like that. Okay. Again, make, make the place with the explosive mines, boys. I mean, at this point of the game, it's not about me, it's about my ally, to be honest with you. Oh, what is he doing? Um, the reason why it's about my ally... Hold on, it's maybe about me! Oh, oh I'm so greedy, dude. Like, no pikeman, I will lose everything here. Uh, I need my, my Saruman here, fast, 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 fast. Boy. Okay. Oh my goodness, man. My, my Saruman maybe can actually save the day. Let's try. Take this fireball. Okay. More explosive mines, please. Oh, Faramir. Oh, Faramir. Okay, nah, he's, he's too tanky, man. Alright, blow this arm. Blow this up. Blow up the mines. Blow it up, my friend. He's scared. Why is he scared, dude? Like, it's far away from you. You have, you have range with your Rohirrim Arches. He's so scared that he might lose his own army. Just kill it, dude. One hit, one hit. Boromir, what are you doing? Boromir. Dude, Boromir is just inting it for a reason. He was like, okay, what is this actually? Can I can I touch it? No, you better don't touch it, Boromir. But the actor of... Oh, I respect that. He was trying to ex make it boom for a second. Explosive mind, but he couldn't get it done. I respect that. Okay. <laughs> just keep sending those explosive mines to trigger your opponent or opponent they are such a unique unit and one of the units that can that doesn't really care about your leadership bonuses it will just blow up everything including heroes look at this it's so strong mind game true true my friend georgie he's he's a new mate of mine like you know also coming new to the beef me game with me one he's from spain he's an amigo He's actually been improving quite a lot, you know. It's always nice people trying to invest a little bit more time to get a little bit better because it offers more quality games, you know. It's more fun. And people know what they are doing. Your opponents, but also your teammates, you know. And if you guys want to also join the multiplayer scene, multiplayer games, the best way to do that is to, first of all, join our Discord server. You can find the link for it in the description down below. And then, it is a channel which is called Looking for a Game. We are using, in 2022, the Game Ranger. So it's like a third-party plot uh, program because, as, as you guys know, uh, EA Games shut down the servers in 2010. So there is no proper way of playing this online. And the most proper way to play it online without the least possible you know, connection problems is through Game Ranger. So don't waste your time with T3A online because it has so many known uh, connection problems. 
you might not be able to connect to the second player. Uh, Gim Ranger feels to be the most stable one in terms of connection. Whose land is this? I don't know whose land this actually is. I see multiple lands. I don't know what's going on, really. <laughs> but my ally kind of got used to it. And hopefully, I mean, he's also, I believe, watching my videos. Uh, whoever watching these videos and playing multiplayer games, quick advice, never use land first, okay? Never. I mean, unless somebody's asking you use land or you want to go for a visa plus before the land. Other than that, never use your land first. Especially in this situation because we have more leadership. There is no need of having more leadership. The land is not about leadership you receive. It's about the leadership you deny from your opponent. It's very important. If you use land just to get a bit more armor, it's just not reliable or valuable. You want to use it in a, in a way when your opponent has more leadership than you to negate his leadership, if this makes sense for you guys. Okay, we are looking very strong in this game. And we will also boom the other guy. We will make it like in the films, you know? The Berserkers against the Explosive Mines. Oh, this scene, dude. Aragorn was so wiping, you know? He's like, kill him, kill him, you know? And Legolas couldn't get it done, you know? The guy was too tanky. The Berserker. They are summoning the Rohirrim. We need to play a bit Matrix with the Explosive Mine. Uh-oh. I don't know who's, who's clock rate it is, actually. I don't know. You might find out very soon. It's gonna say GG, and that's gonna be the victory. But I wanna blow this up. Give me the chance, please. Give me the chance to blow this up. With the Eagles, they don't stand a chance. Our combos are hitting like a truck. So we should be in a good spot. Okay, boys, and I was also making a vote for today um, in, the, in the YouTube channel, and a lot of you guys want to still see Give Me One content, and you know, it's good because it's my favorite game, so I take it, and if you don't know, uh, very quick information, we will have a big tournament very soon for Give Me One and Rise of the Witch King, it's called the World Championship, which is the biggest event ever, we do it every time once in a year, and we have currently over 16 people in BFM1 and over 24 people in Rise of the Witch King. And every single game will be broadcasted on my Twitch channel, Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards. And it's always nice when I get the chance to see and meet you guys from the YouTube channel. When you guys come over to the Twitch channel and then we communicate in a live stream, I would be super happy about that. I know it's a little bit effort. You can click in the link in the description, follow the channel. And again, it's for free. And then turn on the turn on the notifications so when I go live you get like a quick message hey Shanks is live and then you drop in say hi and make me happy it's so easy to make me happy you know what I'm saying GG well played victorious screen as we are used to it <laughs> Kappa I lost actually so many games today but I couldn't upload them because they were horrible games GG well played I hope you guys enjoyed this one if you did don't forget to leave a like subscribe I will see you next time until then take care of yourselves keep hitting like a truck and as always stay beyond standards peace out <laughs>